previous video, I have declared, to make a more detailed video, based on the All Father Odin, from Norse mythology. The reason, I chose this topic, is because, I have came across, too many similarities between this ancient god, and an ancient supernatural being, that goes by the name Satan the Deceiver. In this video, I will attempt to show the viewer, those similarities, by comparing the two to various ancient deities, to their similar creation myths. Transformations, shape-shifting abilities, the search for all wisdom, the promises they both offer, and last, but not least, the many characteristics between these two supernatural beings. Hopefully by this method of comparison, the viewer will see that this being is still very prominent and active amongst today's culture, film industry, occult symbolism and religious views. I hope you enjoy this video, and let's begin. During my research into the occult, secret societies, and esoteric knowledge and symbolism, I kept on noticing either a reference, an occult symbol, or many characteristics, between Odin, the Allfather, Santa Claus the All-Knowing and Satan, the All-Powerful. There are many websites and YouTube videos, that have made the same discoveries, and they are all worth a watch, yet none of them deals with the very origins of these three characters. In this video, I'm hoping to show the origins of all three, and how they are comparable. I believe that in order to fully grasp a creation myth, an occult symbol, or even an ancient belief, one must first understand, or at least know of the origins of that myth, ancient belief or occult symbol. It is easy to find patterns and similarities between the past, and present and thereby predict the future, but you have a better chance at understanding something in the present, if you can first understand its past origins. To solve any problem, or illness, is to find out first the root of the problem, without knowing the cause of something. One only treats the onset symptoms and by treating only the symptoms without understanding the cause of it, is like never solving the problem. So let's begin with the oldest of the three. The Origins of Satan, as stated in the Book of the Secrets of Enoch. I think, it would be best to start with the eldest deity, called Satanale. I am using his full name as before he was called Satan and even Lucifer, his name was Satanale according to the second Book of Enoch. Before I give the origin account of Satan, I should probably elaborate a bit more on this Enoch character. The second book of Enoch, also called The Secrets of Enoch has an origins account of the heavenly host. According to this book, Enoch, was of the seventh generation from Adam and always walked with God, during his father's generation which was sixth generation from Adam, a class of angelic sons of God called Watchers descended to the earth and married human wives from amongst the daughters of man. They also begot children with them, which grew up to become the demigods and heroes of renown. These superhero men were much like the demigods of mythology, having superhuman intelligence, size and strength. This angel-human hybrid race was an unlawful union between the seed of man and the seed of the gods and therefore the corruption of DNA occurred which changed everything that was once created good, and pure, to that of an unnatural state, impure and extremely violent. These sons of God placed their own sons as kings and rulers over the people, and ruled the earth with much oppression, the earth was filled with violence, hatred, corruption and death and required a cleansing from all the corruption, Hunch the Creator chose one man that did not live in corruption but walked with God. This man was Enoch, he was taken from the earth and entered the seven heavens whereby the angels revealed all the secrets of creation to him. How things work on both exoteric and esoteric basis. The last heaven was reserved for the Creator whereby Enoch met the Creator face to face. It is this encounter between Enoch a son of man that has met his Maker, and was found worthy enough to become a righteous scribe in heaven as all of creation was revealed to him, including the origins of the angels and their positions in both the heavens and the earth. The Lord called me and said to me, Enoch, sit to the left of me with Gabriel. And I did obeisance to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me, Enoch, beloved, whatever you see, and whatever things are standing still or moving about, were brought to perfection by me. I, myself, will explain it to you. Before anything existed at all, from the very beginning, whatever exists, I created from the non-existent, and from the invisible, the visible. Listen, Enoch, pay attention to these words of mine. For not even to my angels have I explained my secrets, nor related to them their origin, nor my endlessness and inconceivableness as I devised the creatures, as I am making them known to you today. 
And for all my own heavens, I shaped the shape from the fiery substance. My eye looked at the solid and very hard rock. From the flash of my eye, I took the marvelous substance of lightning, both fire in water and water in fire. Neither does this one extinguish that one, nor does that one dry out this one. This is why lightning is sharper and brighter than the shining of the sun, and softer than water, more solid than the hardest rock. From the rock I cut off a great fire, and from the fire I created the ranks of the bodiless armies, ten myriad angels. Their weapons are fiery, and their clothes are burning flames. I gave orders that each should stand in his own rank. Lucifer, one of the order of the archangels, deviated, together with the division that was under his authority. He thought of the impossible idea that he might place his throne higher than the clouds which are above the earth, and that he might become equal to my power. I hurled him out from the height, together with his angels, and he was flying around in the air ceaselessly above the bottomless. Thus I created the entire heavens, and the third day came. Most Christians do not know when Satan was created, what or where his domain and kingdom was before he fell from grace, or when exactly he fell from grace. Some believe he was kicked out of heaven during the apocalypse war in heaven mentioned in the book of Revelation. Others believe he was the highest ranking angel that wanted to take God's place, and then, there is some people whom believe Satan is just a metaphor for everything associated with the evil influence in our lives and that includes the worst part of mankind. According to the second book of Enoch, the Creator, himself, explains to Enoch, the origins of the angelic host, or heavenly host, which are the sons of the morning. God tells Enoch that not even the angels know how they were created, and how they came to be, and if one looks into many creation myths, many gods and goddesses, are mentioned, to simply have no real origin story. Some are personification for forces of nature, but some just simply came into being with no real explanation of how that happened. God recounts to Enoch that his own heavens was shaped out of a fiery substance and that he created the heavenly host from a fire that was cut from a rock. They are the bodiless army made in their whole being as well as weapons are of a fiery nature. The Bible refers to them as the seraphim or fiery angels, they are also known as the shining ones, which is perhaps why Satan aka Lucifer is referred to the morning star and light bearer. Lucifer was of the class of angels known as the archangels. I have found some insight into what the possible meaning and position of an archangel may be. It will require some common sense to grasp. The main purpose of my YouTube channel, is to not only piece things together and find the pattern links between the past and present, but to also show the viewer that there is an origin to everything, every, word, concept, idea, object, creation myth, and they all have an origins, which is its original story and beginning. Likewise for the word, archangels. If you break up the word archangels, into two syllables, you have arch, and angels. So the question is, what and why, are they called archangels? We know from scripture that there are different types of angels, they vary in appearances, and authority. One of these hierarchy are referred to as the archangels, and in order to understand their purpose, and place, we first have to understand, the meaning and purpose of an arch. So let's first explore the meaning and purpose of an arch, in order to get a better understanding, of why the arch is associated, and linked to a certain class of the most important and authoritative angelic, heavenly hosts. So an arch is an example of an antifunicular form. It's an antifunicular form in two dimensions for a specific loading condition. If we take an arch and extend it, we get a vault. And calculating the forces in an arch and a vault is really the same. Um, a vault you can actually break up into a series of, of arches, so it can be the same type of calculation. For both an arch and a vault, um, a successful arch and vault relies on the supports at the base. So as I push on an arch, we can see that it's moving at the base. What's happening is the flow of forces is going down through the arch and then pushing outward, and we need to support that at the base so that it doesn't do that. In the ancient arches, we used to put massive amounts of stone at the edges so that it wouldn't do that, so it would be supported. Um, there's different ways we can do that now, but that support is key. If we now take an arch and we rotate it, we get a dome. And a dome, while it has similarities, because of this closed ring at the bottom, has some differences. So 
if I push on this, as long as that ring along the bottom can support tension, it's a much more stable and strong um, form. Thus, we need less external support um, on a dome. Now, they are planning to put up the Arch of Baal in Washington, D.C., the capital of America. Why now? We have another election coming up, the midterm election, which is going to be crucial and critical to the future on all these issues, abortion, religious freedom, uh, all these issues concerning believers. And right now is the issue of the Supreme Court, the very, the very vessel that legalized abortion. Well, now there is, when I'm saying this right now, there is someone uh, who's the candidate for confirmation, and all the forces that are for abortion are going crazy, and the issue is not about the person, it's not about any scandal. The issue is clearly about life and death, abortion. And the forces which are for abortion see this as a threat that from the Supreme Court what was done and in 1973 could be undone. It's clearly a war that effect, that's a spiritual war, spiritual warfare concerning the spirit of Baal. And the, the idea is if that those forces which are for abortion can hold out till November, that's it. They will have victory. So the Arch of Baal is now being set up in Washington, D.C. And now the, the arch that is linked to the killing of children. As you can gather, an arch is mostly found at doorways, entrances, exits, and the middle of a building, in order to strengthen the building, and to keep the ceiling from caving in, or building from collapsing. An arch is also used in building a bridge, and it is also the well-known shape for the rainbow that we can see. There is an ancient belief within mythology, that the rainbow is actually a full circle, which ascends into the earth, and continues underneath the earth, forming, one part of the semicircle above ground, and one part semicircle underneath the earth. Either way, this video has to do, with the similarities between, one archangel called Satanale, and one mythological Norse god, called Odin and the Fat Man, in the red suit, handing out free gifts, to those, he has been watching closely, throughout the whole year. Since this part of the video, deals with Satan first, it would be bias of me, to only show one side and purpose for this archangel, so here is the lighter side, of this light-bearing angel, and a deeper understanding, as to where his domain could have been, before he was expelled from heaven. You see, in the Bible there isn't much mention of Satan's origins, nor is there any mention or reference to his domain, it does however mention, that Satan fell from heaven like lightning and then he, is now considered, the Lord of the earth. There are other sacred scriptures, that elaborate a little more on the origins, and domain, of this archangel, and you will find it in the second book of Enoch. Although it is not considered canonical, it is widely studied and used by secret societies especially within Freemasonry, and if there is anything most people would know, about Freemasonry, it would be their mason work, and their gothic architecture, and hidden symbolism within the medieval cathedrals, and temples found all over the world. As you can see, from just observing the Freemasonic symbolism, and the angelic art, and carvings they are displaying, within their art, Masonic temples, as well as their Gothic cathedrals, there is always depictions of the heavenly host, Christians refer to as angels. It comes as no surprise that not only are they depicting angelic beings in their temples and craft, but these angelic beings are often seen with female human beings. This goes back to the story of the fallen angels also known as the Watchers, or to those whom prefer the mythological view, and would refer to them as the ancient gods that came to earth and had sexual relationships with mortal females, which is where the semi-divine to me, superhuman, godlike race came from. Most Christians, have this very narrow view of the spiritual realm, and the heavens referred to in Genesis. When God created the heavens and the earth, he did not create, one supernatural heavenly abode, whereby he dwells, with all of his angelic host. It clearly states in Genesis, that, he created the heavens, which is plural. Although the Bible doesn't elaborate more on what, where, or even how many heavens, it is referring to, the books of Enoch does, which is why, it is vital to read them, if you wish to have a deeper understanding, of the heavenly hosts, and their own domains. You see, few Christians understand, 
or even realizes, that the Bible is written for us, human beings of planet Earth, and therefore it does not, go into much detail about the heavens. The Bible is the story of creation of our planet and how it was transformed into a habitable planet over a period of six creation days according to the Creator's timeline, not ours here on Earth. These are not six literal days spoken of in Genesis, as time itself was not created until day four of creation when the sun and moon and stars were placed in the heavens to be for signs, and hours, days, months and years. So keeping this in mind, before the earth was transformed and made habitable to sustain plant, animal and human life. It was desolate, chaotic and without form. It does not mean the planet itself has not been in existence. Earth as a planet was formless, dark and void according to Genesis, the six-day creation story in Genesis that follows are the transformation of a dark, formless, and empty planet that was transformed through six chronological steps in order that it can sustain life on this planet for its carbon life forms. Prior to planet Earth's transformation, not creation, the atmosphere of Earth, had to first be created, and be of the perfect conditions, to be breathable for the life forms that will come to inhabit this planet over time. So little notice goes into the atmosphere when we read about the creation of our world, and this is where the Book of Enoch focuses on, after all, the atmosphere had to be created first, with just the right amount of oxygen, nitrogen, argon, etc. to sustain the inhabitants of this planet. Science as well as the Book of Enoch, both refer to the seven layers of the Earth's atmospheres. According to the National Geographic website, we live at the bottom of an invisible ocean called the atmosphere, a layer of gases surrounding our planet. In the second book of Enoch, Enoch is taken up to the seven heavens, he travels up past the clouds, descending past clear blue skies, which is considered to be the first heaven, whereby he comes to an ocean, bigger than the Earth's ocean, which lies, just above the Earth's firmament, he then passes into the second heaven, we would refer to a space whereby he sees a darkness and stars being imprisoned there, from there he proceeds further up to the third heaven where the heavenly garden of Eden is, and the heavenly host that inhabits this garden, and from there he ascends further up to the next layer, which is the fourth heaven and so forth, until he gets to the seventh heaven. From there he is guided by the archangel Uriel, which means God is my light, whom brings him up to the eighth heaven where the Creator himself is, and where he is to learn all the secrets of creation from the Creator himself. The Creator explains to Enoch, that the angels themselves do not know how they were created, and that the archangels, were the first to be created out of a fiery substance, therefore they are referred to as the morning stars, light bearers and sons of God. Satanael, also known as Lucifer was one of these first created heavenly hosts. He too was created from fire and was created before the earth was transformed and humankind was created. He was present from the beginning of the earth's transformation and therefore was one of the morning stars that sang together when the earth's foundations were laid down, and the heavens aka, atmospheres, were spread out over the earth. Satan along with all other archangels were given a domain of their own to inhabit prior to Adam's creation, Satan's domain was directly above our earth located in the first heaven. Most people would think, that this is a very wide and elaborate claim to make, with no sustainable proof. And you're right. I cannot prove things of a spiritual nature, but what I can do, is show my viewers, enough evidence, both scriptural, as well as mythological, to piece together, what the ancient civilizations such as the Greek, Romans, Egyptians, Mayans and Vikings, believed about the sky gods, and where their domains were located. For instance, most creation myths, speak of the sky gods, Zeus from the Greek pantheon, along with Odin from the Norse gods, whom were considered sky gods. Not to forget the infamous Anunnaki. There are so many tales of the sky gods, and majority of them involved, the gods interacting with the people of the earth. Some of these gods, such as Zeus and Odin, not only interacted with the man and woman of the earth, but they also, had intimate and sexual relationships with mortal woman, choosing from amongst the daughters of man, wives for themselves. This was a forbidden act between the lower-class gods, and humans. These lower-class gods, had a domain in the different layers of the earth's atmosphere, and what this video will aim to show the viewer, is that these sky gods, are the watchers and sons of God spoken of, in the book of Genesis, book of Job, book of Jasher and the books of Enoch, as well as the tales considered to be only mythology. There are several places in the Bible, which hints at Satan's previous domain. 
The first is not just in the heavens, but the very first heaven, right above our earth. The Bible and the Book of Enoch agree on the domain of Satan, and I can show you from the Bible alone, where it is speaking of Satan's domain. According to the Book of Isaiah, Lucifer fell due to pride and ego, he was a covering cherub in the Garden of Eden. Adorned with glory, yet he was not satisfied with his own beauty, and his own domain that was given to him, he seek the throne of God, and to be worshipped and glorified as the Creator. God says to Enoch, that Satan is actually referred to in the book of Isaiah and not the king of Babylon alone. Satan's throne was in the first heaven, which is the lowest from the heavens, but the first from the earth. He seek to place his own throne, higher than the clouds, and above the stars, which is also considered to be angels, so that he could be equal to God's power, and for this reason he was thrust down from the heavens, and fell like lightning to the earth which became his new kingdom. If the first layer of the atmosphere, is called the troposphere, and it is where the clouds form in the sky, then this layer is where Satan's throne was located. His domain could only have been in the troposphere, for God clearly says in both the book of Enoch, and the book of Isaiah, that Satan wished to place his throne higher than the clouds which are in heaven, the clouds are formed in the sky, which according to the book of Enoch, is the first heaven, and according to science, it named the the troposphere, the first layer of the earth's atmosphere, and is directly above the earth. Looking at Satan's domain from this point of view, it's clear to see, why he is referred to in scripture, as the prince of the air. Satan was not only present at the creation and transformation of the earth and man, but also a watching angel over the earth. He could see everything, and know everything in both the heavens and the earth. Therefore Satan, perfectly fits both sky gods known as Zeus and Odin, for both these sky gods had a domain in the sky, directly above the earth and interacted with humanity. One of my studies into mythology and the occult, have led me to a conclusion. That conclusion is, that the sky gods, and watchers are the angels under the rank of Satan, which followed him, into a rebellion, against God and the heavenly host. When Satan was kicked out of heaven, he occupied both the sky, as well as planet earth with his angels. The earth became the new domain of the so-called gods. Sometimes they resided in Mount Olympus and Asgard the city in the sky, and other times they made their home on the earth as well as inside the earth where the watchers, aka titans have been imprisoned. Nonetheless, it is my conclusion and belief that Satan not only fits many characteristics as both Odin the Norse god and Santa Claus the all-knowing omnipotent and omnipresent immortal spirit which resides in the North Pole, but he also changes his shape, position, and character, so that he always fits in, with the new era of time, the beliefs and political, social and religious agenda of its generations, and the culture, of the new civilizations. Throughout the past and our present timeline. Most people are aware of the Norse creation story, so I won't be focusing much attention, on the Norse creation story here, after all, this video is about, the comparison and similarities, between Odin, Satan and Santa Claus. However, I will do a quick recap, on how the Allfather Odin came to be and who or what, he could possibly represent in creation. According to the Norse and Scandinavian belief, the universe was a black and empty abyss at first called Ginungag, at first there was nothing in this deep dark and empty abyss, but then two worlds came into being. One was called Niflheim, located in the northern regions of the universe, which was cold, dark, ice, frost and fog. In the southern regions of the universe was Muspelheim, the land of fire which brought with it heat and light, as well as Surt, the fire demon. In the center of Ginungagap, was the black and empty void. The flames and sparks from Muspelheim reached all the way up to Niflheim, which began to melt the ice, the melted ice, and black smoke of Muspelheim then ran into the empty black void, and a frost giant called Immer, then came into being, along with the cosmic cow called Omdumbla. Autumbla, fed herself by licking on a block of salty ice, and from her udders four rivers of milk flew, which Immer the frost giant fed on. As Immer slept, he began to sweat, and from his sweat, he produced offspring. His offspring were called the Jotnar, whom occupied, the world of giants, which according to the Norse myths, are one of the nine worlds of Norse mythology. As Omdubla, the cosmic cow licked the salty ice, a head started appearing, 
and so another being came into being, I find it rather intriguing, that the Norse creation myth, speaks of nine worlds. It almost seems, like they may fit the nine planets in our solar system. Just take Autumnblah the cosmic cow into consideration. Autumnblah and Aemir, the frost giant appeared first, on the scene of the Norse creation myth. According to the Norse creation myth, they came into being, in two separate or perhaps opposite regions of the universe. In some instances it states, Imr was first to come into being, and before him, there was only Ga Nun Ga Gap. The empty void, perhaps representing a supermassive black hole, or the great deep and abyss which the Bible refers to. Either way, after a Amir appears on the scene of creation, Autumnblah the cosmic cow comes into being and she is believed to have nourished, a Amir with her teats which produced four rivers of milk. It is not hard to see, that Odbla the cosmic cow in the Prasa Edda of Norse creation myths, fits the creation of the Milky Way quite well. Even down to the four rivers of milk, for the Milky Way has long been associated with center of creation and the river of milk which runs across the heavens. There are many similar creation myths based on the formation of our Milky Way galaxy, and almost all of them. Places the creation of the Milky Way at the very beginning and center of creation. Now keeping in mind that Autumnblah could very much be a reference for the Milky Way galaxy, the question remains, what comes next? For many years, scientists and scholars, were under the impression that the Sun star has to form first, and then the planets come after, but new research has revealed, that Sun stars and planets actually form simultaneously and they do not have to wait for a Sun to form first, before the planets can form. With this new knowledge, it can give us better insight into the creation myths, such as the dilemma, of who or what a Amir the first frost giant can represent? This is my own opinion and not scientifically factual, I believe that a Amir represents either a blue giant star, or another planet, with suns and planets forming at the same time, it is not unusual to think. That the solar system was the next to form in the Milky Way galaxy, and was represented through the likes of Bori, Bor, Besla, Odin, Villa, and Ve, which could very much represent the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. So moving on to the creation of Odin which was apparently one of the three suns of Bor and Besla, which could represent the planets Mercury and Venus, as Venus has always been associated with the female deities as well as the morning star, most people confuse the sun of the morning star with the morning star Venus. If the planet Venus was referred to as the shining one, light bringer and the morning star as many creation myth scholars like to state, then the sun of the morning star, should represent, the son of Venus who is the morning star, therefore I believe that Odin fits the character of Satan ill really well, for he was the son of Bor and Besli which could represent Mercury and Venus. The Bible also states that the planets are wandering stars. And that stars, are actually angelic and intelligent beings. The Book of Enoch speaks of seven stars that have been imprisoned in the second heaven, which is where one finds our stars, planets and asteroids. Even the Testament of Solomon speaks of the demonic spirits and their connection to the meteorites which man perceives as shooting stars. So now that we may have some understanding as to the creation and position of Odin, aka Satan, I wish to show you, the other connections between Odin the All-Father, and Satan the Great Deceiver. According to the Norse creation myth, Odin and his two brothers, which by the way would make up a trinity, supposedly created our world or so the Vikings and Scandinavians believed. Funny enough though, the Nere creation myth actually describes how Odin, Villa and Ve killed Aemir the giant, and how they shaped our world out of his various body parts, for instance his blood became our oceans, his skull became our vault, dome of the sky, his brains became the clouds, his hair the grass and his teeth and bones the rocks, which strangely enough is where we get our calcium phosphate from to strengthen our own teeth and bones. This to me, does not sound like the act of a sole creator god, as stated in both the Bible and the books of Enoch, but rather a story of copyright, where the wrong person, or being receives credit for another's work. I believe that Odin, Villa and Ve, which represents planets, had a role in the formation of our planet Earth, but were not the creators of our world. They simply had an impact and influence and possibly, contributed to the transformation and formation of our planet, and therefore I believe that the Norse creation story, was told to humanity, by those angelic beings that were referred to as wandering stars, which left their own abode, 
ascended to earth and mingled with humanity in our very distant past. They have chosen to follow Satan, which was one of the first created, sons of the morning, which chose to rise up against his creator, plotted amongst the angelic hosts to overthrow the kingdom of God and to set himself up as the creator. It resulted in a heavenly battle amongst the angels which sided with Satan and those whom stayed loyal to God, and Satan and his angels were thrown exiled from their own kingdoms, or planets if you will, hence it states in scripture, that Satan was stripped from his own heavenly light and became darkness like the earth was before it was transformed into a habitable planet. When God created Adam and Eve, he enclosed them, inside the Garden of Eden, which was separated from the outside of the earth. Satan and his subjects occupied the outside of the earth, while Adam and Eve occupied the inner sanctuary of the Garden of Eden, which is considered to be a paradise between corrupt and incorruptibility, and when Adam and Eve transgressed the only law of the Creator, and were sent out to the corrupt part of the earth, outside of paradise where they would have to toil and suffer with hard work, sickness, old age and eventually death, Satan was made lord over them, for the world first belonged to him and his associates. I believe, that after man began to multiply on the earth, Satan created his own kingdom in the northern regions upon the mountains such as Olympus, and the mountains of Asgard, whereby he and his associates, referred to by Christians, as fallen angels, resided, interacted and watched over humanity. Also, claiming to be their creator gods, and upon their interactions, they passed on the creation stories told from their own point of view, which has now been deemed creation myths, but was considered, truth to the pagan civilizations of those days. Odin was considered the god of war, poetry and wisdom. He was also a very powerful wizard, which could transform himself, into various types of animals and characters. One, such character is the old man persona, and appearance, which rose some eyebrows for me. One of my research tactics, are, to find the similarities, between various gods, spirits, and characters, from the ancient past, and compare them to their equivalent figures, throughout the ages, found in various cultures, religions and even creation myths. The reason, Odin's old man persona, stuck out like a green thumb for me, is not because he could transform into an old man, but it was the exact appearance, including his spear that was made to look like a staff, which made the comparison for me, between Odin and Satan. You see, there are books considered, sacred scriptures, but they are not part of the canonical Bible such as the Book of Jasher and Enoch. One of these ancient books, I am referring to, is the first book of Adam and Eve, and their conflict with Satan, after they left the Garden of Eden. This book, not only explains, how and why, Satan occupied the earth outside of Eden, before Adam and Eve was exiled from, the Garden of Eden, but it also explains, the numerous, occasions, and shape-shifting encounters, that Satan underwent, to tempt or lead astray, Adam and Eve, when they first began to live, outside of the Garden of Eden. In this chapter, I will play a short video clip, taken straight from the book of Adam and Eve, it should explain itself, and perhaps you will see, why I found Odin's old man persona very similar to that of, Satan's many transformations, when he appears to Adam and Eve. The first book of Adam and Eve, also called The Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. Then on the eighty-ninth day Satan came to the cave, clad in a garment of light, and girt about with a bright girdle. In his hands was a staff of light, and he looked most awful, but his face was pleasant and his speech was sweet. He thus transformed himself in order to deceive Adam and Eve, and to make them come out of the cave before they had fulfilled their forty days. For he said within himself, Now that when they have fulfilled the forty days fasting and praying, God would restore them to their former estate. But if he did not do so, he would still be favorable to them. And even if he had not had mercy on them, he would have yet given something from the garden to comfort them, as already twice before. Then Satan drew near the cave in his fair appearance and said, O oh Adam, rise up, stand, you and Eve and come along with me to a good land, and fear not, 
I am flesh and bones like you, and at first I was a creature that God created. And it was so that when he had created me, he placed me in a garden in the north, on the border of the world. And he said to me, Stay here. And I stayed there according to his word, neither did I transgress his commandment. Then he made a slumber to come over me, and he brought you, O Adam, out of my sight, but did not make you stay by me. But God took you in his divine hand and placed you in a garden to the eastward. Then I grieved because of you, for that while God had taken you out of my side, he had not let you live with me. But God said to me, Grieve not because of Adam, whom I brought out of your side. No harm will come to him, for I have now brought him out of his side, a help meet for him. For I have given him joy by so doing. Then Satan said again, I did not know it as ye are in this cave, nor anything about this trial that has come upon you, until God said to me, Behold, Adam has transgressed, he whom I had taken out of your side, and Eve also whom I took out of his side, and I have driven them out of the garden. I have made them dwell in a land of sorrow and misery, because they transgressed against me, and have hearkened to Satan. And lo, they are in suffering unto this day, the eightieth. Then God said to me, Arise, and go to them, and make them come to your place, and suffer not that Satan come near them, and afflict them. For they are now in great misery, and lie helpless from hunger. He further said to me, When you have taken them to yourself, give them to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, and give them to drink of the water of peace, and clothe them in a garment of light, and restore them to their former state of grace, and leave them not in misery, for they came from you. But grieve not over them, nor repent, that which has come upon them. But when I heard this, I was sorry, and my heart could not pat patiently bear it for your sake, O oh my child. But, O oh Adam, when I heard the name of Satan, I was afraid, and I said within myself, I will not come out, lest he ensnare me, as he did my children, Adam and Eve. And I said, O oh God, when I go to my children, Satan will meet me in the way, and war against me, as he did against them. Then God said to me, do not fear when you find him, smite him with the staff that is in your hand, and be not afraid of him, for you are of old standing, and he shall not prevail against you. Then I said, O oh my Lord, I am old and cannot go, send your angels to bring them. But God said to me, Angels truly are not like them, and they will not consent to come with them. But I have chosen you, because they are your offspring, and like you, they will listen to what you say. God said further to me, If you do not have strength to walk, I will send a cloud to carry you, and alight you at the entrance of their cave. Then the cloud will return and leave you there. And if they will come with you, I will send a cloud to carry you and them. Then he commanded a cloud, and it took me up and brought me to you, and then went back. And now, O oh my children, Adam and Eve, look at my hoary hairs and at my feeble estate and at my coming from that distant place. Come, come with me to a place of rest. And he began to weep and to sob before Adam and Eve, and his tears poured upon the earth like water. And when Adam and Eve raised their eyes and saw his beard and heard his sweet talk, and their hearts softened towards him, they listened to him, for they believed he was true. And it seemed to them that they really were his offspring. When they saw that his face was like their own, and they trusted him, then he took Adam and Eve by the hand, and began to bring them out of the cave. But when they were come a little way out of it, God knew that Satan had overcome them, and had brought them there before the forty days were ended, to take them to some distant place and to destroy them. And then the word of the Lord God came and cursed Satan, and drove him away from them. And God began to speak to Adam and Eve, saying to them, What made you come out of the cave to this place? And then Adam said to God, Did you create a man before us? For when we were in the cave, there suddenly came to us a good old man who said to us, I am a messenger from God to you, to bring you back to some place of rest. And we did believe, O God, that he was a messenger from you. And we came out with him, and we did not whether know whether we should go with him. And God said to Adam, See, that is the father of evil arts, who brought you and Eve out of the garden of delights. And now, indeed, when he saw that you and Eve both joined together in fasting and praying, and that you did not come out of the cave before the end of the forty days, he wished, wished to make your purpose vain, to break your mutual bond, to cut off all hope from you, and to drive you to some place where he might destroy you, 
because he was unable to do anything with you unless he showed himself in the likeness of you. Therefore did he come to you with a face like your own, and began to give you tokens as if they were all true. But I in mercy and with the favor I had to you did not allow him to destroy you, but I drove him away from you. Now therefore, O Adam, take Eve and return to your cave and remain in it until the morrow of the fortieth day. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Satan transformed himself, on numerous occasions, in order to lead astray Adam and Eve. He could take on the form, of a beautiful angel of light, a godlike being, much like the ascended masters of today, a wise old man, like Odin, a serpent or large snake that stood up straight, on the tip of its tail, and could hypnotize Adam, just as shown in the movie called, The Jungle Book, he could also transform into other creatures, animals, and even departed loved ones as described in the book of Jasher. When Satan appeared to Adam and Eve, near their cave, in the disguise of the old man, with a staff, he claimed that he was their progenitor, much as Odin is said to be the All-Father, and creator of our word, and especially the human race. Satan even claimed that he was created in a garden in the north, on the border of the world, when one looks at any description of Asgard, one will see, that that the home of the Norse and Greek gods, took up their residence in the northern regions of the world, often upon the highest mountain, that had its peak in the clouds. Isn't it of just a little coincidental, that Satan wanted to place his throne, above the clouds in heaven, to be like the Most High? If he was not the highest god amongst his peers, then one can see, why it is, that he wanted to be considered a god on his own accord, singled out, and not just be named, as one, amongst the many, which may very well be on the same level as he was. The archangels were each given a kingdom of their own, in the heavens according to their own ranks, from the first heaven up to the seventh heaven or ninth, according to the book of Enoch with God's glory occupying the tenth heaven. Is it yet another coincidence, that old Saint Nick, better known as Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, is also supposedly, residing in the northern regions of the earth called the Nor Pole. According to an independent researcher and publisher on Norse mythology, Amy Hughes states the following in her book regarding Asgard. Having created the universe, the Aesir went to a remote place, in the center of the world and on top of inaccessible mountains, built a fortress called Asgard. How many religions and ancient cultures, such as the Greeks and Hindu ideology, have this same concept, of the gods living on the sacred mountains? Could these so-called gods, actually be, Satan and his hosts, whom has taken up residence on the earth, on top of a mountain where they built their own cities, and set themselves up as gods, overlooking, interacting, and also intermarrying, with the human race and our mythological past? In this book this publisher, even states, that after the Aesir completed the building of their domain, on top of the mountains, then Odin, the Allfather, appointed twelve gods, who, along with him would be rulers of the fortress. All decisions, regarding destiny and world government, came from that place. It should be quite clear now, that these ancient myths, was once a reality on our world, and that the many different stories of the gods residing on the sacred mountains, are all one and the same, Satan and his hosts, whom set up their own kingdom on the earth, when they were expelled from their own heavenly domains. It is no wonder we, see according to the Norse account, that Odin appointed twelve gods in Asgard, and Asgard was built upon the peak of an inaccessible mountain, much like Mount Shasta, and Mount Olympus with their twelve god, goddesses of the Greek pantheon. There are many more similarities, between Odin the Allfather, Satan, Lord of the Earth and Santa, the all-knowing Elven King, from the North Pole, but that is reserved for the second video, of Project Odin. I will end this video here, I hope that it has opened some eyes, minds, and even, spiritual perceptions, for anyone whom has the time, and patience, to watch it to the end. If you did find it, intriguing, offensive, or confusing, please feel free to post your own views, and comments. We are all on a spiritual journey, trying to help each other, to make sense of our world, with both, the material, dark, and spiritual matter in it. Thank you for watching, and if you are interested on further info on images and video clips used in this video, please follow the links listed in description, and give credit to those, that the content belongs to. As always, take care, God bless, 
and continue to shed some light in these darker times.